Hi. Yes? Is, um, is this place called Green Sleeves? What do you want? Oh, I've heard a lot about this place. I really have. I'm from Sandusky, Ohio. I'm an American, just a tourist traveling around. I thought I'd like to take some pictures for the wife and kids for them to see it. Do you uh, think it'd be possible for me to get in there? No visitors allowed. Uh, could you ask the owner, maybe? He is not here. Excuse me, what's the owner's name? The 15th Earl, Lord Brett Sinclair. 15th Earl, Lord Brett Sinclair. Well, you're sure kind to a stranger. Thanks a lot. See you again. Bye. Nothing. Nothing. Well, what are we going to do? Just have to do it the hard way, that's all. Hup. Can I ask you a question, Your Lordship? Why do we have to break into your place? All in good time, Daniel. All in good time. Uh, thanks loads, Daniel. Uh, Why all this cloak and dagger stuff, huh? Well. Something happened last week, not important in itself, but enough to make me want to see the place again. Oh, it's six or seven years since I was here last. It's run by an old butler who acts as caretaker. Well, the house is a, a virtual ruin. It's been absolutely neglected. Come on. I don't call that a ruin. I don't get it. I haven't spent a penny on it in years. Well, somebody has, and I think we ought to find out who. Not yet. We wait until dark. Oh. At times like these, I always remember my old school motto, Concilio et Prudentia. Oh, nice. What does that mean? Sneaky is best. Yeah, thank you. Nice to see you, my lord. Ward? Ward St. <laughs> my word, sir. This is a pleasure. Well, thank you, Ward. This is a friend of mine, Daniel Wilde. Hey, Gregory yes, Ward. Yes. How do you do, Gregory? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, it's many a long year since there was a Sinclair in this bar. Well, what will you be having, gentlemen? Pint of cider, strong as ever. Sounds splendid. Daniel? I'll have the, uh, put a dead rat in every barrel to give it body. A dry martini. Of course, we all knew you was coming back, my lord, as, as soon as we saw you were having green sleeves done up in such a hurry. <laughs> yes, it's uh, come along quite nicely, hasn't it? The <laughs> first we heard of it was when your old butler, Maury, he came dashing in here with the news. <laughs> like a dog with two tails, he was. <laughs> Drank 12 pints of cider to celebrate. 12 pints? 
Could he walk? Well, hard to tell. He was unconscious at the time. <laughs> My words are you just wait till the rest of the village knows you're here. Oh, Ward. Yes, Lord? I am not here. Hey? I am not here. Oh, right, my lord. I'll pass the word. There's one other thing. I'll be wanting to use the trap door after you close tonight. Oh, it's been a long time since that was used, my lord. It was just like the good old days. Tell you, it does me heart good to know that Greensleeves is alive again. Good night, you can lock up. Very good, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Oh, dear. Now, Your Lordship. Yes, might as well. I'll pick my coat up later, boy. Very good, Your Lordship. Thank you. Come on, Daniel. Hey, just take it steady, sir. Oh, there's just one thing, sir. When you put your foot on the fourth rung from the bottom, it's missing. Thanks for telling me. in the Lexington Avenue Express. <laughs> Where does it go? It comes off in the middle of the house. Oh, what's the matter? Couldn't you afford to have a bar in the house? Yes, but it wouldn't be half as much fun. All right, Ward, you can close up now. Follow me, Your Lordship. What's your hurry? Hey, what was that? Probably a rat. They get quite large down here. Just watch out for their left jabs. Oh, Daniel, uh, you, you see this? Yeah, what? Oh, the bricks, yeah, what about well, it? A few hundred years ago, an ancestor of mine found that his wife was being unfaithful. To who? Well, himself, of course. Anyway, he was a very jealous man. And so he lured his wife's lover down here on the pretext of tasting a cask of wine. Wait a minute. That's Edgar Allan Poe. Two guys come down here, they get drunk together, and the lover passes out, right? Exactly. Then he bricks him up in the alcove, right? No. Yeah. Yes, anyway, he, uh, he labored all through the night. Hey, wait a minute. Brick by brick. Until finally the last one was in place. Then he fell into a deep, exhausted sleep. Right. And then the lover died of starvation, right? Oh, no, 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 no. My ancestor was so drunk that he was standing the wrong side of the wall and he bricked himself in. Could you just lead the way? If you cleaned it up, it'd make a nice playroom. Furniture, books. I put them in storage seven years ago. Look at this. Is that you? Yes, my father and mother. That's me. <laughs> you certainly were a nice looking kid. True. Shame you grew up. Oh, oh, don't move. Whose legs are those? Well, they're not mine. I just borrowed them for the occasion. I didn't think so.
you better hide. You can look now. What happened? He fainted. Would you like to shut the door? What the devil do you think you're doing? I'm going to make it look like a burglary. Don't you know anything? Look at this. Listen to this. It's to Benny Ryan, a theatrical agent. It says, Dear Mr. Ryan, these are the latest photographs. An exact double is too much to hope for, but a close approximation will do. The actor will be paid £200 for the assignment. Mm -hmm. Signed, Pierce Emerson. Mean anything? No, nope, never heard of it. Well, it's a pity you're not good looking. Otherwise, you could apply for the job of impersonating me. Yeah, very funny. Make yourself £200. Very, very funny. Cute, funny. You are funny. There's no question about it. to play Hamlet to the Royal Shakespeare Company. What do you mean he's too short? Did Shakespeare say how tall Hamlet was? Oh, all right. All right. We've rehearsed it. Excuse and all me. we need is a good book. Well, well now look, listen I'm, to I'm thinking Benny. of changing my agent. He's got no, some of doing what? Costumes. I've got a I, I'm thinking of changing my agent. Why don't you try changing your profession? But I don't think they're handling me right. Look, son, if you were Michael Caine, I couldn't help you. I'm up to here in stars, and the business is bad. I don't saw her in half anymore. Well, what do you do to her then? I set fire to her. He does. It's marvellous. I've got this fantastic Well, costume. everybody it's says I've got star quality. Yeah. I, I honestly do, Benny. I set fire to her. Would you like You're to see it, Benny? Nothing oh, Benny, we've got oh, fantastic we It's an audience. Give Thanks for seeing me. You, you really don't know what... And just a minute, son. You have got something. You've got a sort of a animal magnetism. I might just be able to do you a favour. Well, well, I can play anything. Tall, short. Thin fat. Goodbye. Oh, oh, ben, goodbye. Come Ugly, on. handsome. Give Look, Benny, give us a chance. You won't regret it. I bloody set her on fire. Yeah, you do that. Have you ever played a lord? Well, I was in the chorus of student prince. Perfect. There's your big break. Shave off your whiskers, change your hair, and make yourself look like him. And then get yourself down to this address. Oh. A provincial theatre? No, country house charades. You're, you play a Lord Sinclair, and the pay is uh, 50 pounds a week, and I won't even take commission. I'll let them know you're coming. Well, go on, then get going. What are you waiting for, applause? Don't have the fare. Give us that back. Thank you. I was told to expect you. I'll tell them you're here. Wait a 
right in there. I'm Sir John Hussex, Piers Emerson, Melanie Sadler. How do you do, sir? The height's right. The weight's about the same. Profile's off a bit. Well, what do you think? Oh, put him in the right clothes. Emerson? Yes, I agree. Do you think you could impersonate Lord Sinclair? Why, well, yeah. I think so, sir. Have you ever acted an aristocrat before? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. All right, get him in the clothes, get rid of the moustache, then we'll see. Thank you, sir. The bathroom's through there. There's clothes in here. You better come and choose something. Well, um, <clears throat> well, well, what would you suggest? The actor, whatever makes you feel the part. Use the method, or whatever you call it. Yeah. Now, uh, why do you wear that? The, uh, the moustache. Oh, because it's trendy. It isn't. And without it, you might be quite bearable. Well, why don't you get ready? And don't be long. Mm -hmm. Oh! Well? He's changing. I don't think the fellow can do it. He's got no style. Now, don't you be too sure of that. The resemblance is remarkable. Perhaps that'll be enough. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. Ah, oh, Hassock, Samuelson. So glad you could come. I'm afraid I can't offer you any hunting. <laughs> the tenant farmers have done for the foxes. The barber's using everything but grenades. Ah, lovely beard. Wig creations? Mm. Melanie, my dear, you've never looked lovelier. Mm. Let's go into the library. We'll be far more comfortable there. Oh, you. Uh, what's your name? I'm Jackson. Jackson, tea in 15 minutes. I do hope they take the peel off the cucumber. <laughs> Well, why don't you sit down anywhere, my dear? Make yourself comfortable. I see we have something here to get on with. <clears throat> Convincing, isn't he? Remarkable. Clothes maketh man. Playing a gentleman is a matter of detail. Can you keep it up? Well, if you can, I can. What the devil do you mean by that? John, don't be so stuffy. It's a superb impersonation. I agree. Let's give him the final test. The uh, final test? Audition, then. I'll show you off to somebody who is an even better judge of fakes than we are. Why, I mean, that's hardly fair, is it? This is only a superficial performance. I haven't gone into any character detail. The ability to ad lib is important to the role. Get past this one, and the part is yours. Go and get him, Melanie. some information, something to go on. His name is Moorhead. He's been in the service here most of his life. And he's known the real Brad Sinclair since he was a child. Well, he's, he's bound to talk of things I know nothing about. My lord. Moorhead, good to see you again. Thank you, sir. May I say you look extremely fit? Well, thank you, Moorhead. The years haven't left a mark on you either. 
Oh, uh, how, uh, how long is it since I was here last? It'll be seven years next month, sir. Seven years? My goodness, how time does fly, doesn't it? Uh, do the renovations meet with your approval, my lord? Oh, there. Yeah. Splendid, splendid, splendid. You're very kind. I read in the newspapers about young Master Reginald's unfortunate accident. Yes, that uh, was uh, very unfortunate. Really? Uh, has he recovered? Well, yes. <laughs> you could say he was on the mend. Oh, I'm very glad. Now, can I be of service to you, my lord? Why, uh, I don't think so. Not at the moment. Uh, Thank you, my head. You may go. That will be all, Moorhead. Well, that was good enough for me. Me too. Congratulations, Lord Sinclair. Consider yourself hired. No. What's that? I don't think I want to play the part. I was told this was going to be country house charades. Now, there's obviously more to it than meets the eye, and I want to know what it's all about. The Foreign Office is like the theatre. We don't reveal the plot in the first act. The Foreign Office? Really? Yes, well, I suppose if you're to play the part, you must learn your cues. True. You'll have gathered by now that Greensleeves is the property of Lord Sinclair. Yes. Well, Lord Sinclair has very kindly loaned it to Her Majesty's government as a base for secret talks with Richard Congotto. Congotto? Hmm. He's the Prime Minister of Zander. It's a Central African state. Oh, yes, I've uh, heard of it. Congotto's a very difficult man to talk to. In fact, he only agreed to come over when he knew that Lord Sinclair had given the project his blessing. You see, they were at school together for a time. But now Sinclair has gone off in one of his sulks. The sulks? Yes. Oh, he's famous for them. Really? He uh, refused to have anything more to do with the idea, which left us in the most frightful hole. If Sinclair's not here when Congoto arrives, he'll go straight back home again. And talks that are vital to this country will go down the drain. Yes, but if you were at school with uh, I mean, at school with Sinclair... Oh, don't worry. That was a long time ago. Anyway, we'll make sure you spend very little time alone with him so you can avoid any nostalgic schoolboy memories. And I'll brief you with a full history. All you have to do is to learn a few facts, parrot fashion. That's what you chaps are good at, isn't it? Actors are like politicians. We say what we're paid to say. Remember, this whole affair comes under the Official Secrets Act. One word about it and you'll find yourself in jail. All right. Who was your housemaster there? Uh, David Hamlin, we used to call him the Pied Piper. What happened during your last term? I was nearly expelled. Why? Uh, for smuggling girls into the dormitory. It's very good. We've accomplished a lot this evening. We uh, could accomplish a great deal more. You've got a lot more studying to do before playtime. Anyway, I'm exhausted. Country gentlemen, lessons start at eight in the morning. I'll see you then. Good night. Good night. I'm sure you've noticed there's something distinctly odd going on here. I have noticed a certain undercurrent of intrigue, my lord. Tomorrow morning, you will receive a call from a sick relative. You have to leave right away. Yes, sir. Uh, you will tell them that you've arranged a replacement butler during your absence. Now, take this note to the American gentleman staying at the pub. Very good, my lord. I'll explain everything later. Something that you ought to know. Yes, my head. The rest of the staff are healed. Healed, my head? I do apologize for any inconvenience I've caused, but I'm sure that you'll be more than satisfied with my replacement. Yes, well, it can't be helped. I'll get back as soon as I can, sir. Was that Moorhead I saw, Lady? Uh, yes, a family matter, if he's to be believed. What other reason could there be? He may have recognized you as a fake. Nonsense. He 
knows one of nature's earls when he sees one. Well, let's see how good nature's earl is on a horse. Congoto may want to ride, and uh, Sinclair's reputed to have a good seat. He's not the only one. Not bad. Where did you learn to ride like that? Oh, I had a bit part in the charge of the light brigade. Well, let's see how you went into the valley of death. in Korea, where I won a couple of decorations which I'm far too modest to mention. Oh, and my commanding officer was Colonel Frank Buckingham. Yes? The replacement butler has arrived, sir. We'll see her, Jackson. Just show him the ropes. Certainly not. I wish to see his references. Show him in. your name? Uh, Gregor, my lord. Well, Gregor, I imagine you have some references. Yes, my lord. Thank you. Oh, I see you worked for Lord Mednam. Yes, my lord. Hmm. Well, Mednam was never very demanding. You'll find that we run a much tighter ship. For example, we try to discourage the use amongst the staff of Strong smelling aftershave lotions. You will wash it off before you commence your duties. Jackson will show you to your quarters. Yes, my lord. You may need this. Thank you, my lord. Sooner than you think. Prime Minister, it's a great honor, sir. Lord Sinclair, great pleasure to meet you here. May I present my finance minister, Dr. Keeble? How do you do? And my daughter, Carmen. Hello. How do you do, Nice to meet you. I'd like you to meet Sir John Hazards. Mr. Keeble, this is Miss Sadler. Oh, Your Excellency, this is Miss Sadler. How do you do? Miss Congotto, Melanie Sadler. Nice to meet you. Would you like to come to I look forward to meeting everyone more informally in a little while, but the journey has been quite strenuous. Oh, I can well imagine. Jet travel is a boring but moving necessity. Etc. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to show me to my rooms, Lord Sinclair. Oh, with pleasure. Congo. 
Hugo. <laughs> Peggy. <laughs> it's good to see you again. It's been a long time. I read about you in the papers from time to time. Oh, you get quite a bit of space yourself, you know. What was that all about downstairs? The old schoolboy handshake. Were you trying to warn me about something? I'm not sure yet. But things are not what they appear. I'll make a guess once you tell me why you're here. You know that? You set it up? No, I didn't. Sit down. In fact, I wouldn't have known you were coming at all, except by the oddest chance. Go on. Well, I had a credit note for an overcharge by a construction firm. An overcharge for work carried out here. Now, I hadn't authorized anything at all. So I came down to take a look and found all this redecoration. And that lot installed downstairs. So I was tricked into coming here? It would seem so. What's the story they gave you? Confidential talks with your government about financing the nickel mining in my country. I was most reluctant to come. Well, but nevertheless, you came. But only in the utmost secrecy. Nobody knows that I've left the country. I was told that you personally had endorsed this meeting. It was only your name that convinced me that it was worth the risk. What are they planning, Brett? I don't know, but I think we're going to find out very soon. Pardon me. Your Highness, tea. May I pour? Thank you. Uh, what's your name? Gregory, Your Highness. Gregory, yes. Not English? No, not English. Hungarian. Hey, that's great. What city? Uh, Budapest. I lived for two years in Budapest at university. Mikor Yotki. Sugar? Again. Kate Kotska. Kerek. You're no more Hungarian than I am. How could you tell? <laughs> I'm even beginning to doubt that you are a butler. Now look, I'm on your side. On my side? Yeah, right. This whole setup is crooked. What do you suggest? Wait until they make their move. That'll give us time to work something out. Remember, Mr. Prime Minister, concilio et prudentia. Remember? <laughs> Sneaky's best. Time to change for dinner. That's right. The third Earl looks a bit of a rake. Oh, that's not the third Earl, that's the fifth Earl. The third Earl died when he was three, so he never had his portrait painted. You have done your homework well. Alas, my love, you do me wrong to cast me off disturbedly when I have loved you so long. <laughs> Hey, come on, sound it now. Dinner's ready. In your company. Come in. Green sleeves was my heart of gold. Green sleeves was my your divine. Yes, what is it? Oh. I'm sorry Lord Sinclair wasn't able to dine with us. I do hope he'll join us for coffee. Well, I'm sure he will, if it's at all possible. I want him to be present when we have uh, discussions. Oh, of course. It's just that he's been unavoidably detained. my friend. How are you? What are you doing here? I came to tidy up his lordship's room. They'll be calling for coffee downstairs in five minutes. 
Go on down. Jackson, it's not necessary to tell me household procedure, peasant. Brett Sinclair, please stand up. All right. Uh, where did I go wrong? It was the portrait of the third Earl that did it. It's not in any of the history books. Oh. It was uh, <clears throat> very careless of me. You also have the Sinclair mole. It's in all the portraits. Well, uh, I prefer to call it a beauty spot. I suppose this is the end of a beautiful friendship. Oh, it needn't be. When all this is over, give me a ring. And now, let's get started, shall we? And to begin, Prime Minister, I have a small confession to make. I shall be interested to hear it. We are not, not in any way connected with the British government. We do, however, represent a huge consortium of mining companies that are interested in Xander's nickel deposits. We knew you'd never come over to have talks with private business interests, but we were confident that once you came, we could interest you. A harmless enough little deception, don't you agree? I do not. But go ahead, gentlemen, you're already self-confessed liars. What else have you got to admit to? We don't want to be disturbed. Who's got the key to the cellar? Miss Slipper. Don't worry. Sinclair couldn't get out of there with a battering ram. All right. Go on back to the kitchen. And keep an eye on that new butler. Something about him that bothers me. Now, the terms. 85% of the profits to our consortium. I see. You are cheats as well as liars. We are entitled to a substantial return on what is, after all, a huge investment. As for the remainder of the profits, 10% goes to the government of Xander. And the final 5%? Goes into a numbered Swiss account for you. And what would be the amount of my share? At least one million sterling within the first five years. A great deal of money. Father. There'll be an immediate payment of 100,000 pounds made to you in advance of profits. I was just trying to find out exactly how much I would be turning down. Kibu, perhaps you can arrange for a car immediately. Our business here is over. No, Richard. I'm afraid you can't leave here until this matter is settled. You? I did all the preliminary work. Your refusal to cooperate was always a possibility, so there are alternative plans. Please sit down. I think you'd better sit down. Now, I'm sure you'd like a few minutes in private to discuss the matter with your daughter. I've already made my decision. Then reconsider. Jackson will take you to your room and you can mull things over. Emerson will go with you 
to make certain you know the alternatives. When you fully understand them, I'm sure you'll come around to our way of thinking. There is no threat you can offer that will change my mind. Do you really care so little for your daughter's life? Life must be very difficult when one has the handicaps of honesty and integrity. I'm eternally grateful that I've never been troubled by them. A bluff about killing his daughter will work. Oh, my dear Melanie, that was no bluff. John, you don't mean to say... But you couldn't... Now, don't go feminine on me. Upstairs. Daniel, come on, let me out. I haven't got the key. Melanie's got it, but back up. I'm gonna crash into the door and break it open like in the movies. Don't do it. Look out. Look out. Don't I will hurt you. Don't. Oh, God, blinding. Wow. You finished clowning. I'm not clowning. Now listen, will you? What is it? There's a way into the tunnel from here. Yeah. But it's jammed. Oh. Now I think you can open it from the other side. Well, how do I get there? Well, you go through the secret panel in the library. The library is crowded with people, buddy. We well, mustn't let that worry you, Daniel. Oh. Now, when you get into the passage, right. you turn left. Right. Then right. Right. And right again. Right. And then left. of the men and go down after them. We've got them trapped. Which way? No, he said go left. No, I think he meant right. No, as a matter of fact, he said, uh, I don't know. Come on. Get down there and stop them! some trouble. Go and see if you can help. Oh, don't build up your hopes. Everything's being taken care of. Why don't you stop being a hero and sign? And if I do, what's to stop me rescinding the contract the moment I'm free, making public the fact that I was forced to sign? Your daughter will remain here as a surety that you don't go back on the deal. You said there was an alternative. You left Xander under conditions of great secrecy. And Mr. Kibu arranged that a considerable sum of government money has been removed. The press will announce that you have fled the country and you will be considered no better than a common embezzler. I see. 
Why don't you just sign? Daniel! That's me. Who's that? We got a recruit. Hi. Oh, I do love a turn. What are we going to do? Well, there's a lead to your side. Pull it. You're pulling? Oh, here. What do you want to do with it? Man. Push you, Oaf. Push, push. I'm pushing. Well, go on, down now and get Sinclair. Jackson, you fool. The key. <laughs> it's rather like putting ferries down a hole to get the rabbits. I'll try it now. Why don't you lose some weight? Oh, I don't know any diet works at last. I found the diet. Daniel, we have company. Oh, pull. Oh, come on, pull. Oh, I suddenly felt that he's this. Wait, this way. Sinclair. I was expecting you. I wish I could say the same. And Melanie, I'm surprised at you. I thought you much too ambitious to become suddenly sentimental. Excuse me. This is what you call Mexican standoff. I don't know what you mean. Well, you see, if, if you hit me, my friend's going to hit your friend. Hit him? Hit him. Oh. See? Oh. Now, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, fellas. Now, just take it easy. Uh, now, now, will you guys take it easy? Now, look, I don't want any trouble. Here's your gun. <laughs> Dispatch him, Daniel. See you later. the trouble with these English country house parties. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> That's what 
did it, you know. It was that double point. Because when he extended and cut to my cheek, I reposted and cut his flank. That's what did him in. You know, I don't see any reason why we can't run around with swords strapped to our waist all the time. There's no reason whatsoever, Daniel, mm. why we shouldn't, but it'd be very exhausting. Wouldn't you like to go to bed now? Well, not particularly. Actually, I'd like to fence some more. Is there anybody in the household like that? Daniel, it's been a busy, busy day. Oh, come on. Where's your sp... Look at this house. Oh, what atmosphere. I tell you, it must be wonderful living here. That fencing sequence today was terrific. Because you know what he... Daniel, to my Daniel, head, wouldn't you like to take a really good look around? I'll do it tomorrow. No, no. It was when he cut to my... cousin who wandered around in those tunnels for weeks and weeks and weeks, making noises just like that. <laughs> 